Kar Karolinsk is a true jewel of central Kazakhstan. Its unique natural beauty has been praised in poems for many times. The landscapes can make even jaded visitors amazed. One can admire these sights for hours. The beauty of rocks of peculiar shape cannot be described in words. Clean air and local legends attract thousands of visitors to these sites. Every wild corner of Kazakhstan is unique in its own way. Take the Almaty region sanctuary or the Bayanaul preserve. The Karkarali National Park here is a mountain and forest terrain. There are plenty of architectural and natural monuments here. This land has not only an aesthetic value and crystal clear air, but also plant species that can only be found here. Today, the unique rock massifs that rise above the wide steppe are protected by the government. In 1998, according to a state decree, on this territory, the Karkarali National Park was founded here. The total area of the whole territory of the National Park is 112,120 hectares. We developed the park in four directions. The first is protecting, saving and reproducing wildlife and landscape features. The second is research. The third direction is educating the general public and the fourth is attracting tourists. The territory of the National Park relates to Category 2 of a specially protected territory that has a status of a research institution of nationwide significance. Generally, the Karkarali Kent mountain chain consists of five independent mountain groups that are separate from each other – Bugule, Shankoza, Matena, Ayrtau and Kent. Karkarali Mountains and the Kent Massif have a distinct asymmetric features. Their northern slopes are significantly steeper and are richer in springs and vegetation than southern and western slopes. They look like ridges that form seven rock ridges and peaks that are separated with deep gorges, mountain valleys and gently sloping rock valleys. At the Karkarali Massif, the Tarkizen and Akpet Bugule and their ridges extend. Peaks Komsamol, Shankos, Bugule, Koktobe and less significant ones rise over the rest of the mountains and hills. For the territory of the region, river valleys and lake basins are common, as well as small hills of different shape. The flora of the Karkarali State National Park accounts for 244 kinds of different plants that are currently registered, though some sources claim that there may be up to 800 species. This is three times more than in the neighboring steppe zone. In the Red Book of Endangered Species, five kinds of plant species have been included. The Karkara leaf berberis, the smooth sphagnum, the Kyrgyz birch, thin poppies and pheasant's eye. The flora of the Karkara leaf and Kent Massive accounts for endemic and borealis plant. The predominant plant species here is common pine tree. These wild beauties have been growing here for ages. Like humans, these trees strive for a higher position, trying to occupy a better place, growing among steep rocks. Tender birch trees that are growing next to pine trees have a certain charm going yellow and red. Karkarali impresses the visitor with its wild corners. Mother Nature has been generous to this region with the landscape. The mountains have been shaped in a peculiar way as a result of tectonic formations that took centuries to form. The stone layers apparently moved on one on another, rising higher and higher and forming deep gorges, terraces and ledges. The peaks of the mountains stand out with amusing shapes that resemble figures of animals and people and at times reminding us of stone beds and pillows. The etymology of these mountains is not very clear. 
There is a hypothesis that says that there might have been a volcano here. On the territory of the National Park, there are 190 kinds of vertebrate animal species, 45 kinds of mammals, 122 kinds of bird species, 6 kinds of reptiles, 2 kinds of amphibia, and 15 kinds of fish species. The fauna of invertebrates is not studied well and currently there is no accurate information about it. The mammal species are predominantly small rodents that are food for such predators as wolf, fox, corsac fox, badger, weasel, polecat, manu and minx. Before 1940 there used to be bears here. The largest mammals here relate to hoofed species such as wild boar, red deer, roe deer, elk and argali goat. As for birds, most of them here are migratory species, but there are also settled ones. This year we have counted about 240 Argali goats. This is the most recent number. It may change though. Animal populations are not constant. In some years, there may be peaks in the numbers of the animals and in other years, they may experience lows. Herds of animals may migrate, merge with other herds and so on. But the key factor that causes concerns is human activity. The wild goats get disturbed by agricultural works. This scares the animals. Here in the Karkarali National Park, the animals are very easy to scare. They are very difficult to meet too, unlike in the other sanctuaries. In the Karkarali State National Park, different kinds of research are held on a regular basis. Since the day of the foundation of the park, there has been a scientific department that collects and systematizes data from year to year, obtained as a result of their own observations, and the ones made by the park inspectors. For many years, this national park has been a field for practical work of students and scientists. Here, a lot of biological and ecological studies have been conducted. Our aim is to enter the UNESCO list of natural heritage. We are working on this now. We have sent in a preliminary application. It's the main direction we are going to work in the next three years in the field of tourism. We are working on development facilities and infrastructure for tourists. We also pay a lot of attention to attracting the local population to involve them not only in catering and hospitality, but also in getting them to promote the tours. People come to Karkaralinsk not only for getting energized and communing with nature, but also for learning more about wildlife. And there are plenty of places well worth visiting in the park that may take at least a week to see them all. All the places are situated in the mountains and visiting them is only possible by walking. Probably the most popular and famous attraction for ecotourists here is the mountain lake called Shaitan Kul or Devil's Lake. Its crystal clear waters and mysterious stories attract visitors. It is situated at the altitude of 1,200 meters above sea level. The lake form resembles a rectangular cup. Its depth is not known. Local people say it has no bottom. There is a hypothesis that it was formed at the bottom of an inactive volcano crater. Every year, there is a flow of our guests. They are interested in this lake. The National Park each year we have lots of tourists. They come here because of the lake. The National Park, considering the fact that a lot of visitors are attracted by the natural beauty of these places, has included them in their regular tours. From our side, the park's administration, we have done some work to develop touristic paths. 
Today we have organized tours with specialist guides. The lake itself is situated at 1,200 meters above sea level. Every year students and beginner painters do their apprenticeship here. Ecologists do their projects, such as maintenance and sanitary care of the lake and the improvements. Today we can say that Lake Shaitankul is one of the main sites for tourists. Mountains that surround the lake bring it a more mysterious look. Lake Shaitankul is rich in legends. Local people say that every night malicious spirits that live in the lake come out of the water and walk around it. Many visitors do not dare to spend a night here. At the beginning of the last century, people turned to a priest to expel bad spirits from the lake and in 1905, on the granite rock, a cross was erected to show that the lake had been sanctified. But in six months, the cross was found in the lake bottom. Since then, the lake has been called the Devil's Lake again. Another unique natural monument is situated in Maliksai terrain. It proves the existence of early people here in the Bronze Age. The cave of an early human is located in the rock massif. In 1947, the Karaganda Regional Museum workers discovered scrapers and remains of early domesticated animals here. To the north of Karkarali city, in about one kilometer from it, in the middle part of the ridge that surrounds the city is a giant stone canopy. It is the big chamber. It's a natural monument situated in a few kilometers from the National Park office. The big chamber is in fact a deep cavity in the rock. It is 15 to 20 meters wide and its height is almost 8 meters. Under this natural canopy are large stones. Karkaroni mountains are very ancient mountains. Their age, according to geologists, is about 50 million years. We can see that a process of destruction is in progress. They are getting smoother and we can see the soil forming. They are overgrown with woods unlike younger mountains. For example, the Kent Massif is a lot younger. The shape of its rocks is sharp. The ancient settlement Kent was discovered near the bank of the river Kazilsu. Some scientists are inclined to think that this settlement was a proto-city. These remains of the ancient town are considered the largest in central Kazakhstan. Kent was a settlement that was inhabited by ancient tribes who made tools and jewelry from bronze. The large hearths where these people would melt metals and made alloys from copper and tin are the most interesting objects in the ancient settlement. A number of arguments are in favor of the hypothesis that Kent had a status of a city, which is an important condition and sign of the dawn of urban civilization. The results of excavations show that the civilization and state appeared in the Bronze Age. Today, the workers of the National Park do their best to keep wild nature in its initial intact state. The Karkarali State National Park is a natural wonder, a real treasure that we should save and keep for future generations. That's what the National Park's workers, foresters and inspectors are busy with all year round. Their job is not to allow poaching and unauthorized use of the wealth of this wild terrain so that our descendants will enjoy the shade of tall and thick trees and will be able to see the wildlife in the state we know it today.